Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe. On this episode, we talk about the extreme cold weather hitting the Midwest and what it can mean as you prepare for this coming planting season. Ben discusses the potential options for crop protection if your first choice is unavailable. Hear more on inflation, unrest in the Ukraine, exports, and what it can all mean for the markets. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe. Today, we got Turk and Ben, and Ben, we're going to start with you. Yeah, so uh, if you guys follow, or if you don't follow, I encourage everybody to follow uh, our Blue Water Outlook Mershman Seeds weather page. We have our own meteorologist, and uh, his uh, articles that he dropped Friday morning were talking about how NOAA is predicting uh, one to three month outlook on La Nina conditions to, persist, to uh, persist into spring. And what that means is that we are warmer southeast United States, we are cooler northwest United States, and for precipitation wise, the Ohio River Valley will probably be in the wetter zone. Um, and that Ohio River Valley basically stretches from Ohio, Indiana, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, even into Iowa, southern uh, Missouri, southern Illinois. So a lot of our trade area could have a wetter than usual um, February, March, April time frame for the next three months. So that is something to be thinking about as uh, as we are working in our shops trying to stay warm you know that planner is one of those things that needs to be on the high level of uh, priority I think I, and, I, and I know there's guys out there that are starting to work on planners and get things ready for for the next growing season but um, if we are looking at a La Nina style event for it to persist it's going to be a shortened window for us to get in during ideal planting yep, conditions. And seed treatment is going to be really important uh, the bonus coated plus and with Pearl Coat Plus is going to be critical to getting that stand uh, uh, when you have wetter conditions, particularly if you got showers and whatnot coming through. Yep. So I th and I think with with all of the other challenges that we have this year, whether it be getting parts, um, we talked about it last year with our combines. You know, having those extra parts that wear out more often or than not on the planter, having those on the shelf, may be of value to have inventory present for for some of those things. But um, also to be looking at that is we don't want to be caught off guard. We've had this conversation almost at nauseum with where our uh, herbicides, our pesticides are at right now with what's available with at your local retailer versus wholesale. Um, and I was talking to a retailer yesterday afternoon and they are at 70% allocation of last year's acres on Roundup, 80% of their allocations on Liberty. Uh, they have this particular individual had a fungicide that they really liked from BASF and they were going to be really really tightly allocated probably in that 80 to 90 percent on on their BASF fungicide product so if you haven't gone over what the whole plan looks like from planting time all the way through your fungicides and harvest for what crop protection looks like be thinking about that be looking at that and uh, um, Purdue actually had a really nice article that came out in the middle of December on okay if this what happens if you omit glyphosate in your corn program or what happens if you take out Liberty in your bean program what are some some different options and the one we already talked about it at Iowa State Avery interviewed Dr. Hager but one of the ones one of the active ingredients that continually comes to the top is this metribuzin comp component of stiff stuff. So when they're talking about burn down um, that can be used in both corn and soybeans, you have germoxone. One of the things about germoxone that Turk you know very well about is that it kind of has the liberty component. It's a really good burn down product, but it really likes to be in the 60, 70, 80 degree temperatures. Mm -hmm. It's not as effective as Roundup when you are burning down early. And, it's, and it is strictly a, a burn down. It does not translocate, does not go below a, ground. Correct. It is a burner. So you have to get very good coverage when you're doing those burn down applications. But Gramoxone 24D Metribuzin um, can be used in both corn and soybeans as a burn down. And they talk about one of its weaknesses in that situation is the perennial weeds or weeds that get really tall. Um, so you want to be attacking short weeds when you're, when you're working in that burn down. Um, Sharpen is another one that seems to come to the top. Sharpen 2,4-D, Metribuzin, or Atrazine, depending on, Atrazine obviously is only in corn. Um, 
So one of the uh, advantages there, one of the strengths is that that's a good foliar residual for mare's tail. Sharpen's got a decent amount of efficacy when it comes to the mare's tail, palm, palmer, um, the palmer component to it. Um, and beans only because we we are a very, we focus very heavily on beans, that 2,4-D metribuzin clethodim. That is one of the things that Santa and I talked about for our Christmas mm -hmm. episode. So um, that can be um, used as a very strong pre in soybeans. The clethodim is going to be handling your grass species. Your metribuzin is widespread, both grass and uh, uh, broad leaves, and your 2,4-D is mainly going to be for to attack and burn down your, your, your broad leaves. And that's going to give you, that's probably my favorite program when it comes to being able to have three effective modes of action when you're coming to that. Um, one of the other thoughts, if you uh, didn't want to necessarily use the Clethodin product, is they run a 2,4-D uh, metribuzin and chlorimuron, which is classic chemistry. So you're starting to bring back some of these older chemistries to affect or to in effect try to work on your your water hemp species and your 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 broadleaf species so um, the chlorimuron product or select and metribuzin the select is or the the chlorimuron or your classic um, style of chemistry is not going to be as effective by itself so that's why they're wanting the metribuzin piece mixed in with that to uh, to work on that so we will post this um, Purdue workshop um, and it also talks about just a lot of positive and negatives with with where uh, when you pull something out, what's a good option to be filled back in with it? Well, it's the main thing is we still have some options, so uh, th that's the key. Yep. Turk, what do you have for us today? Well, I think we uh, we need to talk about cold weather. I mean, it cold, 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 and you know, as we as it's, I mean, I think Florida's the only state in the country that isn't below normal here uh, late this week and uh, so as the as the weather gets colder the markets seem to be going the other way and heating up I mean we've kind of went down and came going the other way now and uh, increased feed demand is going to start showing up here one thing the one thing USDA can't do a very good job of forecasting is the weather like a lot of folks and so uh, there's ex there's feed demand that is building that is not in the equation right now for these markets. I think the market is starting to recognize that. And uh, also we know that uh, ethanol is, uh, is ramping up more than what it has been the last quarter, so to speak. And so uh, ethanol supplies are going down, which means more uh, feed demand. Uh, we look at exports, huge sales this week in, in the export markets uh, to uh, China. And uh, I'm not sure if they're, what, what the reasoning is, if they want to get things done before everything goes to heck over in Ukraine. But uh, there's, there's a lot of politics going on, but the markets are reacting, and, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's good. So yeah, again, the dry, keep, dryness in Brazil is, is persisting in certain back, areas. Coming back again. And then Ukraine is, uh, is the wild card because they export so much corn and wheat. And, wheat, yep. and um, any disruption of that, could uh, could create some fireworks in this market. And of course, maybe the market's already anticipating some of this already. Maybe it's some of it's already built in, but I, I, I think that, uh, that I had read that corn worldwide is at all time highs right now. So, I mean, in you know, other countries, not necessarily the United States. So that's gonna create opportunities for some of the folks that put the high price fertilizer on, you know, to, to make some money yet. And we've got the, uh, uh, talk of, uh, of the inflation that seems to be the, the the talk this week quite a bit we've got oil uh, making new yep. short-term highs yes uh, and, and higher interest rates tend to pull money out of the stock market and push it into the commodities so we got that that working for the for the commodities so uh, um, people want to tend to get into solid things uh, that you know have uh, you know like the gold and silver and then as well as crops and grains and oil and the if oil does hit $100, that pushes the ethanol That's thing. That's what they're talking. So a lot of things to watch, uh, weather, Ukraine, um, and, and, and in, uh, inflation, uh, and interest rates. Those are all have factors in, to improve commodities. If you don't have your diesel fuel book, get it booked as soon as possible. Yep, yep, that's another good point. 
And I bend on you backing up a little bit, but that planter, that is your most important piece of equipment you have on your farm. Um, and if you want to make money, make sure you have a highly tuned planter uh, for depth and placement and all the other things that go with a planter. But anyhow, lots there's some there's a lot of negative things out there in this world right now, but there's a lot of positive things. And and you know, and as a farmer, you look for the opportunity. So lots of places to look for opportunities right now. So this cold weather, Ben. You know, it's it's cold and it's miserable, and we're all trying to get through it. But what what good's it doing for us? I actually don't mind this cold weather <laughs> for, for, for a couple of different reasons. Well, the mosquitoes haven't been bad at all this week. Right. I haven't been bit once. <laughs> yeah, it's for, for that reason and, and many others, but we, we really do need a little bit of a prolonged stance of this cold weather. Um, for one, this cold weather is hard on overwintering pests in the ground. So if we get a good solid foot, foot and a half, uh, frost in the ground that that's very good for reducing um, overwintering pests like bean leaf beetle worms, for one bean, bean leaf beetles rootworms I mean anything we can do to knock those populations back is that's a very positive thing for farmers um, the 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 freezing thawing freezing thawing uh, component for compaction we really haven't had more than six eight inches of frost the past two winters that we've had so um, the, the key right now is where we're at on snow melt. So I think there, you can kind of see the black out in some of the fields, but we do have a, a certain amount of insulation with the snow that we have right now. But cold weather is, is very good for reducing some of our pests and some of our compaction problems that we have out there. You might say we're having an ideal winter. You know, we had a warm December to get all the, all the field work done. Now we're getting the cold to get rid of the bugs and some of the other things that come into play and help our soil structure. So, yep. So, situation's good. Usually we always have a, a pretty good crop after we have a really cold winter. Yep, it, it gets everything reset back into the places that it needs to be. Re releases additional nutrients. And yep. Well, I conclude, it was cold this week, very cold. How cold was it? How cold was it? Well, it was so cold, I saw a Greyhound bus and the dog was riding on the inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was so cold that in cities, the rats were bribing the alley cats for a snuggle. <laughs> it, it was so cold, Turk, Jack Frost changed his name to Jack Froze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was so cold that the snowmen were wearing sweaters. Um, it was so cold this week that I had to eat ice cream to warm up. That's and cool. uh, it, it was so cold, I put a pizza in the oven and after 25 minutes, it was still frozen. And the last one, it was so cold, the wind froze. The wind froze. That's cold. <laughs> this had no effect on anybody. <laughs> I, I, guess, I smiled. I laughed. <laughs> oh, okay, well, anyhow, I hope it's warm at your house. And uh, as always, we thank you for your business. And we hope your family is healthy and safe. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe.